Well, welcome to our service this morning on this Sunday before Christmas. The theme today is Mary and her response to God's call. Now, there's a whole load of notices, um, but I'm assuming that everybody has got a copy of In Touch. Um, if you haven't, please contact either Tim, myself, or one of the church wardens and we will let you have a copy um, because there, there's too much for it to, um, to give out to expect anybody to remember, including um, uh, we've got Zoom services, we've got YouTube services, and we have real services as well. But for today, do remember later on at 6.30, the YouTube carol service goes live and that's ASR Benefits Carols on YouTube. All the rest do please have a look at In Touch and make sure that you know. Other in person Emmanuel, God with us. Even if some Christmas traditions have had to go, Emmanuel, God with us. Even if we might not get to hug family and friends, Emmanuel, God with us. 
even if we cannot sing carols beside each other. Emmanuel, God with us. Even if Christmas cheer is harder this year, Emmanuel, God with us. And we have now the hymn, Hymns of the North Rejoice, and just remember as we're at home, we are allowed to join in with this. So we join together as we say, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today. God, our Redeemer, who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, grant that as she looked for his coming as our Saviour, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again as our Judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now Heather is going to read the Magnificat, the Song of Mary, and then Mike will read the Gospel, and then Peter will speak. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations.
generation shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath opened his servant Israel. As he promised to our forefathers, Abraham, and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I'm a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. When I left the Roman Catholic Church, I, I find it amusing that actually they asked the next Roman Catholic to preach about Mary, but uh, when I left the Roman Catholic Church and, and joined the Anglican Church, um, I noticed, I was quite surprised how many differences there were. Uh, it took, took me a long time and still I struggled with the variety of churchmanship in the uh, Anglican Church. Um, at that time there was um, a lot of difficulty with the healing ministry which was, as far as I was concerned, part of the scenery in the Catholic Church. But the most striking was the role of Mary. I felt she'd almost been airbrushed out from the excessive role that the Roman Catholic Church has she seemed to be reduced to um, the fourth Sunday of Advent and the Christmas story, and that's about it. Um, I really still wonder why we give the mother of God um, such a minor role. Um, I think in the uh, zeal of the Reformation, in um, quite rightly combating the almost deification of Mary, I think that in my opinion, they, they probably threw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, and even now, after Vatican II, there are quite a few evangelical eyebrows raised at what goes on in uh, 
countries in South, particularly South America. But then I had a look and um, she isn't mentioned at all in the Gospel of Mark. She's only referred to as Jesus' mother in John. But then when you look at Matthew and Luke, she has quite a major role um, from the moment of conception right through to being at the foot of his cross on Good Friday. But maybe it's because of my past. I think she still has a very important role to play for us. Possibly more than any of the other saints. I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I love um, Luke's understatement. She pondered what this sort of greeting this might be. I'm not exactly sure how I would react if I was confronted by an angel. But uh, anyway, she was a little perplexed at least. But I think there's a lot here. Um, I do worry about some of the um, Roman Catholic teaching of the fact that she too was immaculately conceived and um, becomes something especially holy in order that she can give birth to the Son of God. Yet, what we're told is it's a poor, possibly teenage Jewish girl who didn't even ask for that. Didn't even ask to be the one who would bring his son into the world. And he can be in us just as we are, just as Mary was, human flesh in all its difficulties and brokenness. But I do believe that one role that Mary did play, <coughs> which is, I think, still quite useful, was a, a focus on God's feminine side. Um, the Orthodox Church gets around this by, by referring to the Holy Spirit as she. But um, I think for people who actually struggle with the uh, almost over the top maleness of God, um, that Mary can actually provide um, a little bit of a balance there um, as the person who actually brings the physical life to God. She, only she, was the key person in bringing God's son into the world. She was responsible for raising him. She raised him right through until his ministry. And on the cross, Jesus makes sure with John that she is looked after. Surely, if she was that important to Jesus, she's that important to us. Yet, soon after, in the, um, after Jesus was born, she's given this prophecy by Simeon that it will be a painful time, that a sword will pierce her heart. She still goes ahead. She was probably ordinarily religious, but probably nothing very particularly special. Remember, she came from a poor family. She was, as a woman, she was right at the bottom of the social order, yet God chose her. And I find it interesting that both the incarnation and the resurrection both use women called Mary, one of whom has an extremely dodgy past, but the other one probably both coming from poverty uh, roots. So as I said before, Mary hasn't really sought or even dreamt of this, but her reaction is not like Zachariah's. Zachariah questions as to whether God can actually do it. But Mary's is not actually to question whether God can do it, but actually ask him how he's going to do it. She doesn't actually worry about the cost. And when she visits Elizabeth later on, her response is this wonderful words, the Magnificat, which I've, I've chosen their alternative canticle for today. Because we only ever use them in even song nowadays, and I think they'd rather got lost. But they are a really beautiful um, opening of a heart to God, and something that we can use to open our hearts to God too. Um, but it's interesting that if you read Hannah's prayer in 1 Samuel, you'll see that an awful lot of the Magnificat actually appears in that. So 
Mary was obviously quite um, devout and had a good knowledge of scripture to be able to use that. But I'm not asking for us all to get down and pray Hail Marys or anything like that. But I want us to at least look at whether we are missing something important. Because Mary's gift to us was the saviour of the world. And the corollary to that is that God's gift to us is that he is born in us for the world through the Holy Spirit. Now, it might be a bit corny to say um, he's, we, we give birth to him just like Mary did, but there is a truth there. And it's up to us to nurture that Christness within us so that we can then pass it on to others and awaken those who don't know Christ to the fact that, the, that God actually is present in their lives too. Like Mary, we don't have to ask for this. All we have to do is to receive it because God lives in us already. Genesis tells us that we are made in God's image. That means we have his image in us, deep within us, whether we want it or not. So let's think about what the Magnificat tells us. To be hungry with good things. To let the Lord's power work through us. To let him raise us up to receive his grace and mercy. But I believe the message today, above all, is that we're also asked to follow Mary's example. And to go out and shine the light of Christ, the light of the love of Father God in these dark times. Merry Christmas to all of you. May we all know the light of Christ this Christmas. Amen. Thank you very much, Peter. So now we say together in faith, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father, who created all things. For by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son who was slain, for with his blood he purchased us for God, from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. And now Christine is going to lead us in our prayers. We thank you, Lord, at this time of, um, of, of Christ Christmas season that, that we can come afresh and look at you. And I just want us to start by imagining some of the amazing things that we see in in our world um, and we see and we can be grateful to our Lord God for creating it. I want to think about the awe and the wonder of some of the amazing sunrises and amazing sunsets we've seen recently. The beautiful picture of the moon at night and the stars in some of the dark sky areas that we that we live in. I wanted to thank you Lord that you created all this and that you are our Lord and Saviour. And I thank you today for 
a, a fresh perspective on who Mary is and, and her amazing obedience to the will of God in her life. Like Mary, help us to nurture the Christ in us and help us to shine the light of Christ to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world in the areas of our world that people are living with conflict as well as living with coronavirus. We pray for the people in the Holy Land that the conflict would be stopping in this season to enable those who wish to worship freely be safe to do so. We pray for those amazing scientists in our world creating the vaccine and we pray for a fair distribution of a vaccine to all countries irrespective of the country's wealth. We are thankful that the Oxford vaccine has been designed to be transportable um, and also has been created as a non-profit vaccine. We pray for its safety and its effectiveness and we pray that it will quickly get to the places that it's need. We pray for its swift licensing and production and distribution. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the UK, we pray for calming of people's fears. There's so much uncertainty and lack of faith in our government and leadership because of all the changes. We pray for people to understand why the Christmas rules have had to be changed and to be prepared to change their plans. We pray for those unable to travel to family this week and for those who may be alone at Christmas. We also pray for a positive conclusion to all the negotiations with the EU. We ask that you would intervene to make a compromise on both sides to enable a common agreement. Put an end to the stubbornness and selfishness and power play and bring in accord and acceptance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for our communities and the benefits who are pulling together to enable accessible events during the Christmas season. With all the lights up, flying angels and Christmas windows, it brings a much needed smile and community unity. We thank you for our local businesses and shops, which are especially busy and work so hard. And we are thankful for our schools and teachers who have adapted and gone the extra mile this extraordinary year. We pray for the large number of Kings of Wessex pupils who will be self-isolating right over the Christmas period and the impact on their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who are unwell. Let's take a moment of silence to lift up those in our hearts that we know who especially need our prayers, that, that we know who are near and dear to us and that we've heard of who may be in hospital, having ondergoing treatment, must be an ICU with COVID. We lift them up because you can hear all our prayers at the same time, Lord. We pray for those who are facing bereavement at this time. For the families of Alan Bird, David Bannum, Pam Warren, 
and any others that we know. Be with them each day, one day at a time, one hour at a time. We know that in the dark times, you carry us because we can't walk alone. Thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayers. Amen. So in the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness, and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And if you wish to, please unmute just for a moment so that you can wish people peace. No, peace, peace with you all. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. God bless you all. Happy Christmas. Thank you, Aileen. Yes, and to you. And I suggest we now mute again. We can sing along with this if we wish. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks 
and praise. And now we give you thanks because your son, our Lord, was awaited by prophets, announced by an angel, conceived by a virgin, and proclaimed at last to men and women of every race. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voices to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And so we join together in the words of the prayer which Jesus himself gave us. As we say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so we break this bread, share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. And so now we either receive the bread and the wine or we spend a few moments just being aware of the presence of God with us.
we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Now may Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thank you for being with us this morning. We shall see some of you face to face over the Christmas time. Some of you we shall see on Zoom. Some of you we shan't see. But whoever you are, wherever you are, have a lovely, blessed 